the producers and distributors of Tech AV Training Aids, in association with Artisan Training Productions, welcome you to this, the second program in the series, in which we shall be discussing testing and monitoring of confined space atmospheres. In this module, you will learn the reasons for testing a confined space atmosphere and become familiar with typical instruments for monitoring. You will learn how to read and interpret information provided from a typical monitor, learn how to set up and prepare an instrument for use, learn how to use an instrument, and learn how to care for and maintain instruments. Let us begin by overviewing the need for monitoring and typical instruments used for this. As we learnt in Program 1, we know that an atmosphere within a confined space can present possible hazards such as oxygen deficiency, combustible gases and vapours, and toxic substances. We also learned that in an oxygen deficient atmosphere, the displaced oxygen can easily be replaced by other gases and that these gases can cause asphyxiation. The three primary reasons that the atmosphere in a space must be assessed before entry are as follows. Firstly, to determine the concentration level of oxygen. Secondly, to determine if a combustible situation exists. And thirdly, to determine whether there are any toxic substances present and then assess the exposure limits. Having assessed or sampled the atmosphere within a space, it must thereafter be monitored to provide ample warning to the occupants should a dangerous atmosphere develop during the time that the space is occupied. The instruments required by persons entering a space are generally referred to as personal alarms or gas monitors. These instruments are designed to be carried by the person entering a space and kept switched on at all times for the sole purpose of monitoring in the event of a change in atmospheric conditions. There are various types of monitoring devices and we shall be concentrating on typical models currently in popular use within industries all over the world. First, we need to explain a little about how monitors or gas detectors operate. In principle, they all draw air into sensors through a diffusion plate. Sensors are made in various types, but in effect they react chemically to airborne substances and then send electrical signals to the electronic circuits within the instrument. Having analyzed the signal, the electronic components then activate a reading on the display screen. If the electronic circuit interprets a reading that matches or exceeds a given set point, then it will activate an alarm signal in the form of an audible sound and with a flashing light. The alarm warns an operator should a dangerous or hazardous atmospheric condition develop. Some instruments, known as multiple gas monitors, are able to detect two or more different conditions or substances owing to the fact that they incorporate several sensors. Each sensor is manufactured to react to a specific substance or gas type. Another type of instrument is this single gas type, designed purely to detect one known or likely gas. Single gas monitors use only one sensor, designed to detect one type of substance or target gas. Single gas monitors are selected according to the gas or substance that is most likely to be present or to occur within a specific area. Both the instrument types that we have looked at so far can be considered to be monitors. A monitor is basically a warning device. Once the instrument has been configured and calibrated to detect the conditions that you need to be aware of in a space, you basically don't need to look at the display. All you need is to be able to hear the alarm should it sound or notice the flashing light display. If the alarm does go off, 
you must react accordingly by getting out of the space and into fresh air as soon as possible. When we need to assess the atmosphere within a space, then we require a means of sampling that area. This can be achieved by the use of a sampling attachment, which can be fitted to certain types of monitors. A typical attachment consists of a pump, a sampling line, and a probe. The principle of operation is that the probe is inserted into an area that we need to test. For example, through a weep hole in a manhole cover. The pump draws a sample of the air through the sampling tube and then directs this sample over the diffusion pads and thereby into the sensors. The instrument then reacts to the sampled air and provides a display of the detected substances depending upon what gas or substance the instrument is set up for. There are two types of pump modules generally available, namely an aspirator type pump and an automatic pump. Aspirator type pumps are operated manually by squeezing the aspirator bulb. This action causes air to be drawn into the sampling line and into the instrument. It must be noted that this type of configuration limits the instrument for use only as a sampler. If the instrument is to be used as a monitor, then the aspirator attachment must be removed in order to permit air to flow over the diffuser plate or sensors. Automatic pumps remain operating until the instrument is switched off. The pump causes air to pass over the diffusers continuously and for this reason the instrument can be used as a monitor even if the pump remains attached to the unit. In summary, the need for the use of monitors and sampling devices arises because we cannot always trust an atmosphere in a confined space to remain safe. We have seen that monitors also known as personal alarms, can be multiple gas detectors, single gas detectors, purely used to monitor an atmosphere, or with certain types used to assess an atmosphere. In the next section, we shall explain how to interpret the displayed readings on a typical gas detector.